Right, an absolute pleasure to welcome on to this week's play for both former uh, Tramway Rovers striker and Mansfield striker, Chris Greenacre. Good evening. Good evening. Well, Delighted it's, it's to be here. Good evening for you. It's morning for me. It is, yeah. No, it's good evening. But uh, no, good morning. And uh, hope, hope you're all, all well and, and looking forward to the game um, today. So, big three points at stake. The first question I've got to ask someone who's living... 11 hours around the other side of the world from us. What's the weather like? At the moment, I think it was uh, it was tough today. It was probably about 25 degrees in training today. So we're, we're kind of doing it pretty hard here. Although um, last week we've had torrential downpours. If you, you, you may have may not seen on the news, there's been some quite bad flooding in, in New South Wales, which has been quite terrible for, for some of the people that have lost their homes and stuff. So we haven't had it all... All, all bright and breezy, but uh, today was a, a nice 25 degrees. Still certainly warmer than Birkenhead, I can assure you that much. <laughs> um, Chris, we, we look back at your career. You've, of course, played for, for Tramia and at Mansfield, but it, it all started out at your, your boyhood club, Leeds United, uh, you, and that got you a move to, to Manchester City. Firstly, playing for your boyhood, well, starting at your boy, boyhood club, Leeds United, that must have been fantastic for you. Yeah, it was great. Uh, even though I was only only a kid there, um, you know, to, to play for your local club, um, you know, and, and be associated with it at such a young age was was a, a terrific thrill. And um, I think initially when I went on trial at kind of school of excellence level, um, I went for a trial, a four week trial, and it, it wasn't that successful. And um, my father remembered getting a letter through the post saying. Um, you know, uh, thanks, but no thanks in, in kind of no uncertain terms. So uh, we kind of just plodded along. He didn't really tell me about that. And then the following year, almost to the day, I had another trial and um, I, I signed, you know, um, School of Excellence forms on um, on that on that night. And they actually didn't remember who I was from the year before, which was weird. So, um, yeah, so I was there for, for a while. Um, and, and unfortunately, at that time, the, the youth development policy at Leeds wasn't, wasn't, overly great I think at that the intake of their their YTS players or youth training players at the time I think they only kept maybe one player on who who became a pro a, a pro um, so that kind of I wouldn't say alarm bells started ringing um, but then you kind of start going on trial to different clubs and, and all that kind of stuff and um, I was close to signing for Sheffield Wednesday in Derby County um, and then had trials at City and just seemed to do really well and 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 probably had my best trials when I was at City and um, they offered me what at the time would be schoolboy forms then at, at 14 years old and um, I remember having a, a conversation with the chief scout there and he'd had a conversation with my dad saying I, I, in ideal circumstances could you see yourself playing in City's first team because that's what we need we need players that can you know foresee themselves playing in the first team and kind of it was a really tough question at, at 14 years old like you know, this is a long way ahead. Um, you know, they're they're forward thinking like this, and they're as, actually asking me, would I want to play in the first team? And uh, it's quite a lot to take in as a as a as a young kid. And um, and you know, I had a long chat with my family, and was like, you know what? Yeah, I could. Um, and it kind of started from there. And um, so, you know, training two or three times a week over the Pennines. You know, driving from Yorkshire. Um, you know, twice, three times a week was. Um, was was quite an adventure, um, and and they say things happen. I'm a believer in that things happen for a reason. At, at that time, my dad was made redundant from the mines, um, the local mine where we live, and so that allowed my dad to be able to have free time to be able to take me over and, and to training and and, and stuff. Um, so yeah, that kind of helped me. Um, so it wouldn't have been that easy to probably get across the Pennines at that time. So yeah, for, for whatever reason, it seemed to work out, and and I signed at City. And you signed for City and look at the strikers that they had. They had the likes of Paul Dickov and Sean Gota. And there's you rocking up saying that you can go and get in the first team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit ahead of myself now. But uh, at the time, obviously, the you know, there was a, a heavy plight, a heavy fall from the Premier League at the time. And, you know, they dropped from the Premier League and we went through an unbelievable amount of managers um, you know, the, the club really was in free fall, nothing like what it is today. And, um, you know, it, it was difficult as a, as a young, when you advanced to being a young pro there, you, you were forever um, trying to improve, impress the next coach that came in. But literally, they, they were coming through the door that quickly. Um, 
you know, Steve Koppel, I think had, I don't even think I spoke to him. He was like, he was like 40, 50 odd days or whatever it was. It was a, a crazy amount of time that he was in the helm. And um, yeah, we had caretaker managers, Phil Neal, you know, you name it, they all came through. And and then Joe Roll came in. Um, I had a couple of um, couple of loan spells where I was trying to get a bit of uh, bit of experience on on loan, which, which you tend to do if you're a bigger club and not, not getting games. And um, you know, trying to learn the game, what it is like to be a pro and, and play week in and week out. And I'd say, in in hindsight, I, I probably wasn't ready um, to actually get in anyone's first team at, at that time. You know, you're playing reserve football um, and the reserve standard at that time, there were some some really good players playing in, in those, I think it was the old Pontins League, you know, some good players playing in. Um, and you, you kind of go on loan and it's, it's it, you have a, a difficult time and you come back and then the management's changed. And, and then um, I think at one point, I think we had about 60 pros on um, and the club were looking to then offload you know, as many players as they could. And unfortunately, I was one of those. I, I think I still had three years on my contract left. Um, so unfortunately, Joe Roll thought it was time for me to move on. And um, yeah, um, so I kind of had two or three months of like playing reserve football. And after that, I actually started a game for the first team against Millwall away. So I literally came out of the cold. I don't even think I'd trained with the first team. And then I started against Millwall away of all places, which... You know, the, the atmosphere that you get at Millwall is quite a hostile one. So someone that's not been even training with the first team, being thrown in the deep end there was was a, was an iron opener. Um, but yeah, you, you either sink or swim and, and that's what I did. And um, and then I went, I got a, an opportunity to go on loan to Mansfield and uh, Billy did and was the manager there. And, um, and Billy basically just said, look, come here, you'll play. You'll play every week. You know, I kind of know what you're about. I've watched you in a lot of reserve games and, you know, I'm a fan of you and come and play, come and, you know, get some games under your belt and, and, and kind of went from there. And, um, and um, you had some good chats with Billy and he was a real believer in what I, I could do. And, um, and sometimes that's all you need as a player is, is that your manager really backs you and, and wants you. And uh, yeah, and, and, and I ended up going on loan initially and then um, signing in permanently after that. And, Apart from your a, a quite prolific spell at, at Scarborough, your time at Mansfield was that's when your career really took off because you, that that's where you, as you say, you got the regular football and you were finding the back of the net quite regularly. Yeah, I, I started. I think my first low at the when I initially signed on loan. I think I I think I scored five or six goals within that first month, so I was quite prolific. After that, it kind of filtered out, and I think I ended up from from around Christmas time to the end of the season. I think I had about about nine nine or ten goals um, but that really gave me a belief that I could kind of I could produce at that level and um, and um, and then the following season kind of things started to click into place and you know managed to hit the hit the back of the net quite regularly I think it was about 18 or 20 goals that season and um, and then the, the sort of final year when we, we got promotion um, you know I was quite prolific in that one um, but we 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 had such a we had a good team around us. We had a good mix of young and old players, you know. Um, you know, we had Les Robinson playing at centre back. He was a stalwart, you know, top top defender. Um, you know, Liam Liam uh, Liam Lawrence and Lee Williamson, young players who've gone on to play in the Premier League. You know, Bobby Hassel at Barnsley. You know, lads have gone to play, you know, at, at good good levels. Um, you know, um, we we just had a real mix. That, that seemed to gel and um, it was no surprise that we were successful there. So I remember Trammy going there during that time where that squad was together and I think they beat us 6-1 and we thought, wow, and we turned up expecting to go and just, oh, it's, it's little old Mansfield. No, my God, yeah. you just sweep us to one side, are you? Yeah, we, 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 had a, we had a good side. We had a really good side and... Um, as I say, we, we, we kind of got freedom to, to go and express ourselves, especially the young players, um, you know, and they, they were just eating it up. They were, they were getting results and they were, just, they were just on the front foot week in and week out. Um, you know, we were, we were keeping clean sheets at one end. You know, Kev Pilkington was playing out of his skin, um, you know, and I, myself and the other boys were, were producing goals at the other end. And um, we just kind of, the just momentum kept just, evolving and evolving and we just week in and week out and say these young players were just 
eating it up and um, they were thriving on that pressure and, um, and, and producing. To get that promotion to Division 2 with Mansfield, uh, what, what was that like? Because that was obviously your first promotion of your career. Yeah, it's the only one in my career. Um, so I, I look on it with really fond memories because um, I remember, I think, we played, um, we played Leicester in the FA Cup uh, at Filbert Street. And um, I think that was in the January, just after Christmas. And there'd been a, quite a few rumours that there was a couple of clubs interested in me and, and kind of nothing materialised. And I decided to stay till the end of the season. Um, and Billy Dearden um, actually resigned after our game against Leicester. Uh, we lost 2-1. And um, he resigned after the game, which was a huge shock because we were near the top of the table and suddenly our, our manager's resigning. Um, and then Stuart Watkins, his assistant, took over. And um, again, Stuart had been part of um, producing, helping produce these young players coming through on this conveyor belt during the youth team times and kind of brought them into the first team. And um, yeah, Stuart took over and um, we, we, we just, again, carried that momentum. And I think we, we hit a bit of a rocky spell kind of really close to the end of the season where it was kind of make or break. And, and I think we needed a, a result, I think, midweek before our last game of the season um, to go for us. And I think Cheltenham had to, if they won the game, they, they would have got that third spot and we'd be definitely in the playoffs. But I think they missed out on that result and it went into the last game of the season. And, um, and we had Carlisle at home and, um, you know, I, I forget where Cheltenham were. And I remember like after about, we scored after about 10 minutes, we scored from a, a corner, it was a, a well-worked set piece and we scored from that. I think it was Wayne Corden scored like a bomb of a, a goal for us. And then we could just hear the pockets of crowd um, sort of cheering because a goal had gone in and you know you, the, the punters were on the radios and you could hear them and you're thinking wow this this maybe could could be our day it could be our day and and then we I think Andy White scored another one and then we were like and then pockets were going off again and we're thinking this really really could happen and by the end of the game the fans were they were literally stood on the side of the pitch the stewards couldn't keep them like out of their seats and um and then finally, the, the, the final whistle went. And um, at that time, I knew I was, I was leaving. And, um, and Stuart brought me off, I think, with about five minutes, ten minutes to go. And I'll never forget that feeling of just sort of looking around and, and seeing the fans and sort of giving, being able to thank them um, for one last time. Of, uh, you know, obviously, I wasn't going to play for the club again. And, um, and I'll, that was something I'll, I'll cherish forever. And that season, that's when you moved to... A big step up in terms of football clubs. You went to Stoke City. That that's a big move. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, it, it was a move that you know I thought was going to be work out really well for me. Um, Steve Cottrell had, had kind of um, just got the job, and Stoke had just got promotion. Um, I think via the playoffs. So I was kind of joining them in the in the championship, and um, and it was it was a great club. A lot of fantastic people there. And um, I had a pretty good pre-season. I kind of, I, I kind of finish off the, the goal-scoring form during pre-season. I was scoring goals in pre-season. Um, I wasn't quite as fit as I probably wanted to be because um, it took quite a while for the deal to go through. So I missed a little bit of pre-season. Um, but again, um, you know, started to, to score goals in pre-season, which was great. And then in my last pre-season game, I, I. Um, smashed my ankle to pieces. Um, I took, we played West Brom at home and I turned in the six yard box to shoot and my ankle kind of stayed where it was and um, I had an injury and was out for sort of three months, which really set me back because obviously you're signing for a new club and you get injured and you're kind of up against it. Uh, and unfortunately, um, the, the week that I came back for training um, to, to obviously start getting involved again, Steve Cottrell left and went to Sunderland he went to be Howard Wilkinson's assistant in Sunderland. So um, Tony Pulis came in and, um, and and Tony was great. Top manager, got a, had a really good relationship with Tony. But, um, you know, Tony wanted bigger sort of type strikers and had a different way of looking at the game. And for that first season, I think I played about 18 games. I think I scored six, six goals or something. So wasn't overly prolific, but we were still kind of scoring. Um, and then, unfortunately, in that sort of second season, I hardly played. I was on the bench for for large parts of the season, which was a bit bit frustrating. Um, but I played more in the the 
final, my final, my third year there. Um, but I look back on my time at Stoke was was some some great times. Some played some in some big games. We had Chelsea in the FA Cup, played Arsenal in the FA Cup, and Tony seemed to in these types of games put me in those games. So you know, I relished you know playing in these really really big games. And even even my last game for them, we played we were playing Sunderland away when Sunderland had just got. Uh, you know, promotion back to the, the Premier League and, you know, you know going up, up there and playing there. So I've got some fantastic memories. Um, but at times I was I was played out of position at times with Tony, you know, played in midfield and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, you, you kind of do a job for the team, but I wouldn't say overly happy of actually where I was playing. And, um, and um, as I say, I wouldn't, looking back on my career, I would never... I wouldn't change that time again if I had the opportunity to go back to Stoke again. You know, you go in a heartbeat because, as you say, the fan base absolutely fantastic. Top stadium, great place to play, good training facilities, just just a fantastic club. Um, but then I kind of, at the end of that season, I spoke to Tony and and, and I got offered a new contract there, and and actually uh, decided to go elsewhere. Um, for me, it wasn't a financial. It wasn't a financial. I suppose gain. It was it was more about getting my career back on track and, and getting back to playing up front again, which there was probably no guarantees that that was going to happen at Stoke. Um, and, and 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 unfortunately, that's football. Um, but for me, it was about. I think my goal ratio went from something like one in three games or whatever to then something like one in thirty-seven. Like my goal ratio went out the window. And but as I say, it was 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 really enjoy playing in the Championship, playing some good against some good players good level um, and, and that's when um, at the end of the season um, the opportunity to come to Tranmere um, came along again similar circumstances to Manf- Mansfield where where Brian Little was kind of saying look come and play you're going to play for me you're going to play up front get back to scoring goals is which which is what you know you, you, you're made for and and, and I want to do that and that was a that's what convinced me to come I think the last two or three seasons Tranmere had been obviously in, in the playoffs and we're really pushing to get back in the championship. So the idea behind it was to hopefully sign for Tranmere. I knew they'd be there and thereabouts at, at the end of the season and, and a possibility of getting back into the championship and, and playing against, you know, Stoke again was kind of how I, you know, for, you know, foresaw things happening. And, um, and that's what I did. And that's how the move to Tranmere came. Did anybody <coughs> push you towards signing for Tramia? Because obviously you're stoking the championship rovers, they just they just got beaten in the semi-finals of the playoffs. Did anyone push you towards signing for Tramia? No, it was just I, I just fell in love with the club as, immediately as soon as I as soon as I spoke to Brian, you know, I had a real connection with him. Um, and anyone that knows Brian's a, a, a lovely guy. Um, and again, similar to Billy. Um just I just liked what he was saying and he, he wanted to back me and you know you know as I say it wasn't of, of a financial thing it was more about me getting my career back on track again and, and and doing what I thought I could do best and this was a platform that you know I wanted to do it on and you know I, I came to the ground looked at the stadium spoke to my family and and everyone and we thought you know what let's let's give this a go and um, you know get get back on track and and so yeah it was just a just a, a real football decision. And your first season, you come in and you certainly put up your your scored on tally again. I think it's eighteen goals in your in your first yeah. season back at the club, and you had big boost to fill too because we just lost the likes of Ian Hume. I think Eugene Daddy had just moved on as well, so you had big shoes to fill. And and my God, you filled them. Yeah. No. It, again, it was it was a, a little bit. Um, you know, similar to Mansfield, because like you say, you've got big shoes to fill. You've got, um, you know, legends at the club, guys who you still spoke about. Um, but also you've got some really good, young, talented players who, you know, obviously all, we, you know, we were sold on and all that kind of stuff, which was similar to Mansfield, where, you know, you've got this real blend of experienced players and young players who were, again, not frightened of playing and, and, and wanting to, improve and and take their their game to the next level and and from personal point of view it was yeah I found my scoring boots quite early um and yeah you know just with, without my teammates you know they, they played a huge part in that and help helping me settle and um and again I just I just 
enjoy. I love I loved playing at Prenton Park. It's a top stadium. I look at the pictures now and I wish I could play there now. It was just love playing there. You know, scoring in the cop ends just I think that's where I scored my first goal in the cop end. And I thought, yeah, I can get used to this. Um but yeah, it was just um just everything sort of fell into place. Just unfortunately it wasn't this the season um for the team where you know I think we finished 18th and it took us to go down to to MK Dons to get a result I think one week prior um to, to actually stay in the division so you know although I had real football decisions and motives to be there you know as a as a team we didn't we didn't get to where I, I wanted us to be um for, for whatever reason I don't I don't I, can't, I don't know to this day why but yeah it just didn't happen unfortunately yeah, that, that first season they were 18th, yeah, and it was a, it was a rocky season. Uh, Brian Little uh, moved on as well, and and Ronnie Moore came in. How did you find working with Ronnie compared to Brian? Oh, just different outlooks on on the game, um, just different way of, of looking at the game. Um, you kind of there were no, I suppose, no punches pulled with Ronnie. Ronnie told you exactly what he thought of you on any given day of any performance. And if, if your standards weren't up to where they, they should be, you know, he certainly told you about it. But his, his experience and his man management skills were different, but very, very effective. And, um, and he, he, Ronnie was great to work for. Um, you know, you, 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 as I say, you certainly knew what, what he wanted. And um, again, with... With their experience, obviously, I had the experience at Rotherham, knew exactly what it meant to take a club, you know, up the divisions, been very successful promotions wise. Um, and again, just a, a different outlook on, on the game and, and how he did things. Uh, Brian was probably a little bit more reserved, but again, man management skills were, were fantastic. And um, yeah, certainly you look on those and the role that I'm in now, you certainly look on those roles of how different things happened and you know, I certainly take them into my role now as a as a coach now. Uh, Jordan, your your time at training, <coughs> you, you scored some, well, you scored a lot of goals for the club. But I, I'm guessing your favourite goal was against your your boyhood club. It certainly was, yeah, it was, and um, yeah, I get goose pimples up too if I think about it. But um, yeah, to I think just the build up to the whole thing. Um, obviously, Leeds getting deducted. Uh, you know, I think it was eleven points. I, I could be wrong, but um, and straight away there was this Leeds put up this fight of it kind of us against the world type, you know, barrier, and um, and for us to have them in the opening day of the season, um, you know, was was our cup final. And as to be fair to Leeds, every everywhere they go, they were having to play cup finals, and. Um, and we were delighted because there's a lot of hype leading into that game. Obviously, Dennis Wise was their leader and, you know, everybody knows the type of player that Dennis was and, and certainly the, the Leeds team at that time reflected that. Um, and But, you know, to um, to score against them um, quite early on in the game and at that end in front of the Leeds fans were kind of saying, I'm, I'm, I'm one of you a lot, but today this is my job. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, unfortunately, we weren't weren't able to get the result in the end. We gave a, I'll never forget the game. We, we gave a, a, I think it was from a wide free kick that they, they, we conceded. And um, yeah, yeah. Even to this day, I when I'm doing set pieces at my club, I still remember we had too many players in the wall and they had, I think it was Matt Heath got around the back and they scored. And um, even to this day, even when I'm doing set pieces, I remember that. So I always know how many people I need in my wall that's wide because <laughs> it costs us heavily. So, but um but no, great, great to look back on, and um, yeah, I was I was delighted to score against them. Uh, you played with many, many strike partners at mm. at Tramier. Was who was your favourite one? Who's my favourite one? Too many to mention, but I think when you when you're looking at uh, I suppose combinations, Gareth Taylor was great. Was a great foil to play off, obviously, um, with his size and and for a big player was such had such a good touch and. Um, you know, held the ball up very well. Um, you know, I seemed to, you know, work off Gareth pretty well and uh, we had quite a good understanding. And, you know, I, I think I scored quite a few goals alongside Gareth where he maybe didn't score as many, but he was in, heavily involved in 
you know, of a lot of a lot of that. Uh, Ian Moore again, we were kind of similar type of strikers, you know, where we, we both worked pretty hard for the team and you know got our goals. So whenever you've got a, a striker that's working as hard as hard as you are, obviously you, you kind of complement each other. So um, you know, they will look back on, on memories of those guys, yeah, I think. When you mentioned Ian Moore, then when Ronnie brings in Ian Moore, and you rightly say you, you, you were very similar kind of players, did you feel a bit more pressure knowing that it was his son and that you were similar? Maybe, maybe, yeah, from the from the outside initially, you, you kind of, you think that as a player, it's like being at any club where you think, you know, there's a player coming in in your position and if you're similar that, you know, maybe the writing's on the wall and stuff like that. But but it's, it, it's, it's interesting that um, it's actually not like that. It's actually not like that, and um, you know, I, I just remember back in, you know, had the same the treatment as as we all kind of did. You know what I mean? He was not put on a pedestal by any stretch of the imagination, and and that's why I think the relationship with the players and also their them as father and son also worked. But but every, anyone that knew, uh, you know, Ian, you uh, know, he, he worked just as hard as anyone else, day in day out of training. It wasn't like he ever took a day off. You know what I mean? So you never actually felt like that, even though it may look like that. Um, and and it's and until you're in that situation, you know, you kind of uh, you kind of um, you don't really know. But obviously, any striker coming in, we could have brought in someone else, and I would still have felt vulnerable. That's just what happens in football, and it's kind of up to you to to stand up to that player coming in and 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 show the manager that you're you're worth the place in the team in front of. The, that guy and um, and that'll never change. And there was also a a rumor circulating, and I'll I'll, I'll stress rumor circulating, and, and and hopefully you can <laughs> you can put an end yeah. to it. Um, goal scoring bonuses, Chris. Uh, <laughs> were, were, were you put on the bench so you wouldn't score? I, I may have been, I may have been, but that might have been a rumor. Yeah, so I may have been, but yeah, again, just it's probably one of those things you probably never find the truth out in all of it, but. Um, yeah, just it was kind of hard to, I, I suppose, if you find yourself not in the team when you're kind of pushing to to get up the, the ladder. Um, I think I was on 19 goals or something like that. So, but uh, you know, it, it is what it is, and um, you know, you kind of look back to it now, and yeah, think things happen for a reason, I suppose, and yeah. So whether that answers your question or not, you read into that whatever you want to do. But nah, it's. Uh, it's um, yeah. No, I, like I say it was um, it was just good to be for, for me being left out of the team on nineteen goals when just personally wanted to get to twenty goals. That's probably hurts me hurts me more than anything because I you know there's a, a difference between a nineteen goal scorer and a twenty goal a season goal scorer, um, and that's what probably. Hurts hurt me more than anything is just um, having that opportunity taken away from me because whether whether our financial implications or not, you know you're remembered as a twenty goal a season striker, not a, a nineteen goal a season. And money doesn't last forever, you know. You you the the, the you, you got certain things in your life that you know really mean a lot to you, and 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 certainly any goal scorer in any team to you ask them if they could. Get over the twenty goal mark. That's, that's a, a big landmark in any any striker's um, CV. Um, so that that probably felt that I had that taken away from me a little bit. Um, but you know, even the games where I was on on the bench, I had had the odd chance here and there. You know, maybe it w was never to be anyway. You know, but it is what it is, as they say. Nineteen goals or twenty goals, Chris. You still looked upon by Tramia fans. <laughs> so fondly and with great love because you you were the first real consistent goal scorer to come into the club since John Aldridge was there because so uh, we we had goal scorers but they he'd come and go or they'd come in there and he wouldn't maybe score as many goals as we hoped he would but you came in and, and you instantly the fans fell in love with you. Oh, I, I had a, a really good affiliation with the fans. Um, they were they were fantastic to me from day one and um, it's it's. It, it, I'm quite proud to, you know, to for people to still think of, of that and stuff. Um, but, you know, again, you've got a legend you just mentioned there, John Aldridge, even to be even 
spoken about in the same breath as him is is an honour because you know he, there aren't many strikers that um, you know could lace his boots and I certainly wasn't a striker that could lace John Aldridge's boots. He was such a top striker, um, but was a, a legend for the club and um, and and he's he's fondly remembered and, and rightly so and and someone I certainly looked up to. And um, and if there was anybody at that club, but you know, you'd want to replicate, it was definitely him. Uh, during your whole career, I've I've asked about your your favourite strike partner. Who was the best player that you actually played with as a whole at Tramway Rovers? Because there were some interesting characters. There were some big names, Ian Goodison. There were some big players at the club. Yeah, yeah, good, good. He's right up there. He's um, and again, his his affiliation with the fans in the club is. Is is so deserved. He's um, he was he was great to play with, and um, he was great because um, Ronnie would Ronnie would let him uh, kind of get away with murder, should we say? And um, we we'd be training, and next minute, I'd, you, you're playing up front, and you find Goody's playing up alongside you, and like you know, if I I was to go out of position, I'd be told you need to get back there. But Goody was was given special privileges, but I say he's given special privileges. That's because he turned up on a Saturday. Week in and week out, you know, come rain or shine, Goody was always, always there. Always, you know, you could rely on him, and that's why he had such a such a top career. And and he's he's he never there in pre season. Yeah, he, he did have an extra two weeks. Funny, he could never get a visa in Jamaica for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, but no, it was he was he he you know for for what he got away with in training and stuff like that. He was he turned up. Um, he turned up week in and week out, and um, and that's why he he is a true legend of of, of Tramway Rovers, um, you know. And he he um, he the odd times I've seen him, he still reminds me. He nutmegged me three times in training, and they never let me live it down. So uh, again, I I look back on that with some some great memories. To get nutmegged by a centre back three times in one session is is probably a low part of my uh, my career. But but I'm glad it was him that did it. Brilliant. Um, you've come towards the end of your your time at Tramia. Um, looking back over the seasons is obviously it is, but do you think one one of the big regrets is not getting promotion with them squads? Absolutely. Um, again, you know, I I signed with Tramia for for the right the right reasons and the the, the makeup of of the squad were were exactly that I, I keep mentioning this kind of young and experienced kind of blend and um, and we certainly had that we had some really good players and I think I think if we all look back that's probably one one regret is not at least getting to a playoffs one year with the quality of squads we had um, particularly my last season when I, I got injured I think I fractured my foot at Christmas and then I did my medial in um, my medial ligament in my knee in John Atterberg's testimonial, and I kind of just I wasn't quite fit enough for the last game of the season. I think we needed to go to Scunthorpe and get a result to get in there. And I remember training the day before my Les Parry had me my knee strapped to death, and I was even practicing just toe ending the ball in the net. And, and Ronnie kind of just said, "Look, even if we can get you on the bench, just to throw you on." For five minutes, if we need, you know, just you to stand in the six yard box or whatever, and you can toe poke it in or whatever. Did absolutely everything I could, and um, I wouldn't say I'm a hard player, but I've played through a hell of a lot over my career, and um, I just couldn't, I just couldn't get this knee, this knee. Just I probably needed another week, and I would have, I'd have been struggling, but I would have put everything on the line to to be there, but I just couldn't get there, and uh, and unfortunately we didn't. Didn't quite get that result at Scunthorpe, and that's probably a regret of mine. That hopefully, I'm not saying I would have been the saviour or by any stretch of the imagination, but would have bolstered maybe our strength in the squad to maybe get a result. Um, uh, but that that's that's probably one regret that I have getting that that medial injury in 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 what was a I don't mean this any disrespect to John, but it was a nothing game. I actually tried my best to 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 not have any contact with anybody. Because I'm trying to protect my foot, and then to do my knee is probably something that I I regret being involved in. Um, um, looking back, but you, you know, if I would have got through that um, that testimonial game, 
I would have been in the squad at the weekend, probably on the bench, and I would have worked my way back, hopefully, into the team, or I would have been on the bench for the rest of the season, but I would have been fit. So that's probably, as I actually think about it now, is, is probably just one, one, one real regret I have. That was the same as Anthony Kane. He said exactly the same the other week, and that game as well. To, to be in the lead, and then for, for them to equalise right to the death, absolutely yeah. heartbreaking for fans, players, coaches, for everyone. Yeah, I was I was there and I was sat in the stand and and you really think, you know, this could be something great. Selfishly, for me thinking, okay, we get in the playoffs here another week, I've got a chance of being involved in the playoff game, so my, my season's going to be extended and hopefully I've got a, then we win and I've got a, a chance to go to Wembley, which I've never, I didn't, didn't have the opportunity to do so. Um, and then for it to happen the way it did was, like you say, just absolutely heartbreaking, you know. And, and you know, f- personally, it finished off a, a crap couple of months um, at the club. Um, but unfortunately, again, with that squad, uh, as Casey would have said, like we, we had some, we had a good side, better than probably the Scunthorpe team that actually beat us. You know, we had a better squad than them and were, were I think, better equipped to, to tackle the playoffs and go up without a shadow of a doubt and um, unfortunately it wasn't to be well after that game you became Jude of Chalmers and went to New Zealand <laughs> I did yes yeah so um, yeah just got an opportunity to um, it was actually with through Gareth Eds and um, Gareth Eds took a phone call one day and um, from an agent from this part of the world basically they were they were trying to get all the young national team players back to Australia to to kind of help build this brand of this this A League. And um and Edzie wasn't ready to go. He he got his family were all settled here in I think down in Milton Keynes still. And he was he was settled and he kind of just said to me, you know, would you would you would you fancy it? And as obviously at the time I was injured and I was like, yeah, yeah. I've seen seen a bit of it on on TV. And um myself and Robbie Stockdale used to you know, watch the the A League highlights show at times during the week, and Robbie and I had always Robbie more so than me had said, um, "Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd give that a go." You know, if not, you know, if I couldn't get a new contract here or whatever, I'd, I'd give that a go. And I kind of said, "Yeah, you know what? I never, never say never." Anyway, Edzie just said to me, "Look, um, if you if be serious about it, I'll get the agent to give you a call." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, okay, no problem." And um, not for a second thinking there was anything in it. Um, I spoke to this agent and the agent kind of said, look, I'll get back to you in a few days. Um, I'll see what interest there is. And there were a couple of clubs, Wellington being one of them, and then Newcastle Jets were the other one. The Newcastle Jets one kind of fizzled out and just said, look, I, I know the chairman in, in Wellington. They're still, I said, yeah, that's New Zealand. He's like, yeah, they're, they're still part of the, they're in the A-League, just all their away games are in Australia. So oh, that's a bit, a bit weird, but yeah, anyway. So long story short, made the connection and a couple of phone calls later, you know, I had a, a contract sent through and I signed a contract and um, I think I signed maybe in the April and then it was, I think we were here in the June on our wedding anniversary, uh, which I said to the wife, it's a, a, wed- a anniversary present. <laughs> so, yeah. What was the jump like in, in, in terms of the, the quality? Was it, was it a bit of a shock to you? Ah. Uh, Yes, shock in terms of how much better it was than I expected. Um, the it, it, it's it's really strange here because there's there's obviously it's a salary cap league and basically you're trying to as a player you're trying to get as much of a slice of this 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 salary as you can. Um, so you get ranges for players on lower paid wages to higher paid wages, but then. Uh, in the meantime, on the top of that, you've got five import spots, so players from obviously all over the world who tend to be on the the, the better money, and um, you you, you have, a, have a, a wide range of players. So for me, there's players here who could the odd one will will do well in the Premier League. For example, Aaron Moy did did brilliantly with with Brighton, um, and um, and then. You then, from the other end of the scale, you've got some young players here who, who you know, are just starting out in the game. So you'll see moments of brilliance, but then you'll also see moments where, well, that was a bit poor. So trying to gauge the scale is is quite 
was quite difficult, but um, the, the league in itself has, has improved significantly. And um, players, I think the old, I think prior to kind of me getting there, it was it was seen as a just a retirement village and everyone just goes up there to pick their money, live in the sunshine and then retire. But it certainly isn't like that physically. It's as physical as any of the leagues in the UK, um, you know, that I've played in. And if you come here on a holiday or you're not fit, then you will struggle. Excuse me. <coughs> you will struggle. Um, but no, we, we came here and um, all the games are televised. Some of the stadiums here can house Premier League football in a heartbeat. Um, I mean, you've seen some of the some of the Premier League teams now are all coming over to Australia to, to have pre-season here, get, get good crowds, massive stadiums, facilities are, are pretty good. And, um, you know, again, you know, play, the, the players are sponsored where in the lower leagues in the UK, the boys are not sponsored. So it does have, you know, a lot of differences. As I say, you're playing on TV every week. That doesn't happen in the lower leagues. So you can say it's got a, a mixture of pretty much everything. And um, and certainly uh, is a good league to 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 come and play in. When you told your your family that you were moving the more to New Zealand, yeah. what was their reaction? Um, wow. Um, and then you know as we as we spoke about it, um, you know they our families were right behind us. Um, they they just said, look, if that's if that's what you want to do and give it a go, go for it. We we back you, and and that's kind of what me and my wife needed. Um, and we, we initially signed a two-year contract and then basically how the contract worked was if, if I didn't fancy the second year at Christmas time, I, I would be able to terminate the second year. So when I left in June, at the worst, I would have been back in, in you know, probably February, March time. I'd have been back in the UK. So at the worst, we could have tried it, not really for me. And, um, and we go from there. And, um, you know, we, we got here. And we, we kind of fell in love with the place. Um, Wellington's a fantastic part of the world. It was um, voted um, the world's best capital city for, for a number of years. And people that have been there will certainly understand why. Uh, but, but yeah, a far cry from what I'd been used to in, in the UK. And in terms of your playing time for, for Wellington, you were obviously you were getting plenty of game times. And then you were joined by... Uh, a former Sammy striker and the most fashionable man in football, Eugene yes. Gaddy. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was um, it was great to um, to play with Eugene. He actually came in and and he got in the team before me. Um, so yeah, I was a bit annoyed when he came in and took my place in the team. But he was um, no, it was great. It was great for for Eugene to come. He did he did really well for us, and I think he scored one of the one of the best goals we've we've kind of ever. The score, he had the, the overhead kick. Um, that's that's you know the fans here, you know, um, watch over uh, quite a lot. Uh, but no, it was great to have him there, and we we, we sort of reminisced and had a lot in common at, at Tranmere. And again, both really enjoyed our time at Tranmere, so it was great to uh, exchange stories with him. Sorry, I <coughs> and hopefully get some discounts off his t-shirts as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, you progressed through there. You, 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 your playing career comes to an end, and you decide, "Hang on, I'm staying here. I'm going to just stay on." And you've been there ever since as a coach, assistant manager. You've been involved in the reserves, and again now you're assistant manager. Yeah, it's um, it's been a real roller coaster um, since I retired. Um, so at the time, Ricky Herbert was our was our head coach. He he had a dual role, so he had. The Phoenix team, and he also had the national team, and um, he he was successful and, and took the club, um, sorry, took the, the country to the World Cup in South Africa. So um, when he offered me the opportunity to be assistant, um, it, you know, I kind of weighed up the pros and cons of, you know, hopefully the longevity after football will be in coaching. Um, obviously, you want to play forever, and I was still in pretty decent condition, I think. Um, you know, with the, the protocols that we do have in place now um, for the players to recover and all that kind of stuff, I, I certainly could have um, maybe played another year. But, you know, financially, it wasn't going to make an impact on my life. It, you know, it wasn't suddenly you were going to pay be paid lots and lots of money and to play another year. Um, 
so I looked at, at the pros and cons of it and thought, well, hopefully the longevity can be in coaching. And, um, you know, how often do you get a, a World Cup manager who gives you the opportunity to become his assistant straight from playing? It's kind of unheard of. And um, and that was a real turning point for me to uh, to try and um, start my, my coaching career there. So that happened. And, and unfortunately, Ricky lost <clears throat> uh, shortly after and kind of thrown in at the deep end, uh, you know, as a B licensed coach, being thrown into the deep end, suddenly caretaker coach. And um, you, you either sink or swim and um, yeah, just get on with it. And that, that's what I did. Is is that where you're going to be staying now for the, the rest of your career, do you imagine? Or is your ambition one day to maybe come back and, and manage in the Football League? Um, yeah, you never say never. You've got ambitions to, to um, you know, obviously at some point, you know, stand on my own two feet. Um, you know, whether that would be here in Wellington or elsewhere, who knows? Um, I'm not in a, or haven't been in a rush to go. I need to be a head coach right now, and and it's got to happen right now. And I don't care who I'll stamp over to to kind of get that opportunity. Certainly not me as a as a as a person, and and certainly not me where I am. Um, I've been, been very lucky that the club have, have backed me and we've had, you know, numerous coaches come in and, you know, kind of part of the deal is that they've they've worked with, had to work with me, which is, you know, again, it, the club have backed me with that, which is is, is great to, to know um, and stuff. And I certainly don't take take that for granted because um, in the world of football, you can lose your, lose your job in an instant. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. But I've been lucky enough to still be here, and um, I, I say never say never. Um, but as I say, I'm not in a, in a in a mad rush to go. I need I need this right now. If if the opportunity arose, opportunity arose, you certainly look at it. And um, I'm certainly a, a lot more experienced now um, than I, I ever have been. Um, so as I say, we'll see see what happens. And um, this season, um, obviously, it's it's been hit by the whole world's been hit by the. The COVID situation. There's been no difference uh, down under, and it, it's had implications and, and a big impact in in how you're running things at Wellington. Massive. It's been in obviously a huge hit worldwide. Um, so we, we've we had to um, basically finish our season last year. Um, we had to come and quarantine for two weeks, um, and then. And um, we, we ended up being here for, for three. Uh, the, the season was finished. They, they cancelled the league. So we had to get out of Australia pretty quickly. We got back and then had to quarantine when we got back. Um, and then they restarted the league up. So we had to come back over, quarantine again for two weeks. And then we spent three months at the end of last season over in Australia. Um, as soon as we'd finished the season, we then went back to New Zealand. We had to quarantine again. Um, and now this season we've now come over, we quarantined and um, we've now been away for five months now, away from home. So at the, by the end of this season, in the next couple of months, we'll have been away probably away from home for about a year. So um, certainly been very, very, very different. Um, we're currently in New South Wales now. So we're, we're south of Sydney in a place called Wollongong. Um, where well, we have our training base here now and all our squad is living locally within the town now. So basically our club has uprooted and moved to Sydney. Um, so a big operation, a lot of financial implications um, that we, the club probably didn't expect and, and all this kind of stuff. So very, very different season, very, very um, uneasy season. Um, but you know, there, there are people in fast, far worse conditions than, than what we're in. So, again, we, we're kind of just getting on with it. And uh, we had a, a great result the other night and we now have a, a game tomorrow, um, tomorrow night. So hopefully we look forward to that and hopefully we can get back-to-back -back wins. And how are the lads adapting? Are they doing well this season? Yeah, the lads, we, we've had a bit of an up-and-down season. Um, you know, we've... we've um, <laughs> we've had a couple of decisions that I think have really gone against us, which cost us quite dearly. Um, the odd penalty here and there, and the odd handball and offside situation, which I think everyone seems to be having at the moment. Um, and to this day, I still don't know what the handball rule is or the offside rule is. So um, 
like everyone else, we're, we're, we're complaining and, and moaning about results and stuff. But, you know, we've, uh, we've hit a little bit of, of form. Um, you know, we've, we've drew and, and won the last game. So hopefully we can get another three points tomorrow, tomorrow at home uh, against MacArthur and, um, you know, take seven points from nine. And that'll stand us in good stead moving into the, the latter part of the season. Yeah, and we wish you the very best of luck with that game uh, tomorrow, Chris. Um, today, though, a, a massive game for for two of your former sides. Trammy Rovers are facing Mansfield Town. Who do you want to win? <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, I will sit on the fence. I want to, because I, I, we said prior to the, to the program, I uh, just want to see both teams do do really, really well. Um, and and for both reasons that you know, I really want to see Mansfield get up the up the table, um, especially after the the sort of difficult start that they had at the start of the season. And um, I certainly think um, Nigel Clough's the right man at the helm to to get the club back to where it belongs. Um, although they're only I think ten points off of playoffs, so a little run together now would would hopefully see them up there. Uh, but then at the flip side of the coin, you know, I'd really love to see Keith Hill's men get into. Uh, Get into that automatic promotion spot. Obviously, they're, they're in a bit of form at the moment, and um, you know, um, you know, we want them to to certainly get into that automatic playoff spot, and hopefully not rely on um, going getting promotion through the through playoffs. I'm sure if um, they had the opportunity, either way, they'll they take it. But um, no, I'm, I'm sure you know, I'm sure it'll be um, it'll be a top game. Indeed, it will. So I just say Mansfield. Still got a chance of playoffs and Rovers, never mind top three. But there's a real chance of winning the league this season for the first time in the history. Absolutely. That'd be that'd be a fantastic achievement. Again, from similar circumstances, having a you know a difficult start. And unfortunately with 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 um, with Jacko leaving the club early on, you know, which was which was unfortunate and and uh, I wish him him well in his his next chapter. Um but um things have kind of Certainly, the, the the ship was steadied um, in the interim, and then you know Keith's taken that on. So, hopefully, he can um, take him on to promotion. Lovely, Chris. I could talk to you for days about your entire career, mate. And I must <laughs> say, it's an absolute pleasure to finally catch up with you. Uh, it's been a, been a pleasure, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's great to reminisce about you know two fantastic clubs, and um, you know there were there were great parts of my career, and I I look back. On, on both um, at both clubs with some fond memories and, and met, met some wonderful people and still in in contact with a lot of wonderful people and um, and I certainly wish both clubs all the very best and and thanks to you Adam I really really appreciate it and uh, hope you get that knee and ankle sorted now. <laughs> Cheers, Chris, and uh, ho hopefully one day we'll see you back at Prenton Park. That would be nice. <laughs>